What does your background with Melbourne tell you about the situation, Jack? Well, Jeff, I would say that this is one of the greatest calamities that ever happened at Melbourne. And I hope that uh, wiser wisdom prevails and that Norm Smith is back in his rightful place as coach of the Melbourne Football Club. Of all the thousands of sackings in a century of league football, the one that rocked Melbourne most was on a Friday night in 1965. Norman Smith, who'd coached Melbourne to six premierships in 11 years, received a note to say he'd been fired. Today, his name is honoured with the medal for best player in the grand final. But in the late 50s and early 60s, Norm Smith was the super coach. Well, I suppose the sacking of Norm Smith was one of the biggest stories, sporting stories of the century. There's no question of it, because the man was unchallenged as the best football brain we had and with the best team, and they sacked him. No one would uh, come and tell me, just a special messenger turned up and handed the letter, and I read the letter, and I would say that uh, I was rather shocked. Norm Smith was never one to humour committees, and he was neither the first nor last coach to feel the committee's axe but he was responsible for the most potent force in post-war football. He was a remarkable person, very determined. I think he had a, an effect on a lot of people's lives. Norm and his astute brother Len were the tactical masters of the 50s, the influencers who shaped Ron Barassi and a generation of coaches. When I was captain and playing, I often used to spend some time after the match in the dark talking to Norm at the race. And uh, one of the greatest things about Norm Smith was he wasn't secretive about his ideas. Norm had learnt well from the great Checker Hughes and blessed with a batch of fine young athletes, he developed a team for the wide open spaces of the Melbourne cricket ground. And Norm was uncompromising. Hard but fair. <laughs> he used to tell us that all the time, hard but fair. And we, 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 we often, under our breath, used to add in a few adjectives there. <laughs> Melbourne's 55 premiership was overshadowed by the sonic boom which shattered the MCG that afternoon. The kick towards the centre of the ground, and it was McLean, and also Healy went up. Healy got the ball away from him, tears around using to... The head-on clash when Melbourne Reserve Bluey Adams sprinted onto the field and into Collingwood's All-Australian wingman, Des Healy. Adams and Healy, it was, and here's a kick towards... 27-year-old Healy had won the Copeland Trophy that year, but never played a game, saying he couldn't stand another blow like that one. Adams starred in all six of Smith's premierships, broken only by one of the century's greatest upsets, the 1958 final when Fonce Kynes Collingwood baited Melbourne to play the man and not the ball. Melbourne, the Demons are first out, led by John Beckwith and Ron Barassi. They are an all-conquering side. Despite the wet, watch this beautiful pass. Big... Collingwood's hooker Harrison achieved lasting fame by shutting the dynamic Ron Barassi out of the game. Johnson again for the Demons. And I said to the other players, you just play football. Don't worry about what Booker and I do. So we went around and we had a few players. After the change, there came a change. And now you can watch closely as Melbourne's diminutive rover, Ian Ridley, is floored by Collingwood's Bill Sarong. Norm Smith shows concern as he moves amongst the Melbourne players in the last endeavour to win the Premiership. His side in the frying pan is nearly in the fire. In the Magpie camp, Fonce Kine emphatically impresses the Collingwood players to hold Melbourne in this vital last quarter. I can remember the cigar smoke was going up in the air and the, the Melbourne stand was dead, I thought, and we, I said, we've got this, Melbourne. Marquardt saves a Collingwood attack, he kicks it to the flank, but it's all over, and Collingwood wins the 1958 Grand Final. They've brought, that, they've brought uh, into being the greatest football upset for many, many a long day. Murray Wiedemann. In the Collingwood rooms afterwards, Smith told the Magpies, I hate you bastards, but my God, I admire you. The 1965 dismissal of Norm Smith was the culmination of many clashes between coach and committee. We got arguing of the committee over something, 
on Wednesday night. I said, you went to a big school. He went to a public school. I went to a state school. I said, but they still spell principle the same way. And it's the principle for which I am fighting. And if you haven't got principle, you haven't got anything. And I've got principle. And I'll fight for this principle to the day I die. Unbelievable. To be sacked like that. After 14 years as coach. But it was as if, you know, they'd ruled Farlap out of the Melbourne Cup. And the f sporting world, the football world, just came to a dead stop. Norm Smith sacked. As dramatically as he'd been dismissed, Norm Smith was reinstated at a meeting four days after his sacking. Smith was never the same coach at Melbourne. And in 30 years since, Melbourne Football Club hasn't won another premiership.